Hi, welcome back to the third video in my novel writing tips series. So we have discussed plot and characters in the previous video, but what is equally important is the setting, which is what I want to discuss in this video. Put simply, your setting is when and where your story takes place. And it's usually a good idea to know this while you're creating your plot and your characters. Some plots and characters rely on a certain setting to function. Uh, some don't, and I'll go into examples of both. So uh, a couple examples of why you might want to think of your setting before your plot is due to both you know, the time it takes place and the location. Uh, for time purposes, uh, historical romance is a really good example. Uh, certain things <laughs> would not be a problem in modern day. Uh, whereas in the Regency period, which is the early 1800s, uh, if a woman is caught alone with a man, she usually had to either get married or she would be shunned. <laughs> and that type of thing does not work in modern day. And also you have um, historical fiction if you're trying to write a certain account um, of, you know, a war or something, or you're trying to write a, um, a story in that time period, of course, you need to know what your setting is before you write your plot. Uh, also, it's what's important is knowing the location sometimes. Sometimes time period, um, well, time period is also location dependent a lot of times. Different things are happening in different locations at different periods of time. So, if you want to, say, write a novel about um, segregation in the South, uh, you need to set it in the South at a certain time period. If you don't, <laughs> you're going to have problems. And this seems fairly, fairly intuitive, but sometimes people think of a plot and then they don't realize that the location or the time period they have it set up with isn't going to work. Um, some more minor examples, people will have certain technology or certain things that are necessary in their story and it wasn't invented yet. And so you got to pay attention to that sort of stuff. So that's why if you can figure out your setting first, you can kind of avoid some of the issues of having to rewrite what you were doing because you didn't have your plot all laid out and then try to put it in a setting. So yeah, try to think of your setting first. If you know that certain elements of your plot are going to be dependent on a certain location or and or a certain time period. Now, while it can be a good idea and necessary in some situations to figure out your setting uh, before your plot or a lot at the same time as your plot, some genres are actually more conducive to doing your setting later. One particular genre that I love is urban fantasy. And I've attempted to write this genre before. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> I love it, but I'm so bad at writing it. But you can kind of figure out your plot first and then just build the setting around it. Whatever your plot necessitates, you just build the setting around it. Because it's fantasy, it's already assumed that some things are going to be different than just a regular contemporary modern setting. So if your story demands that they're running around a city, you can have it take place in a real city or a fake city. If you're really bad at geography, which I am, you could have it take place in the desert, in the mountains. You have it take place on a completely alternate earth. Uh, you can have it take place wherever you want it uh, that, you know, fits with the story. And so it's really nice. You can write it and be like, all right, well, okay, well, I guess it's going to have to be in this place. Oh, well, I guess I have to do this. And so that way you don't really have to worry too much about your setting if you're not really into thinking about that stuff ahead of time. Uh, fantasy is also a genre that you can do your setting later. Although one of, the, one of the great things about good fantasy series is that the world is a big part of why it's so unique. So 
you can go at it from either angle of I'm going to plan my setting first or I'm going to figure it out later. And either way is fine. It, it just there are some pros and cons to it. So once you know where and when you want to set your story, you can run into a couple of pitfalls. And the main one is over researching or over world building. Over researching is more uh, on the historical side. Um, over world building can be for anybody. And what I mean by this, um, for the researching part, when you're doing historical fiction, you want to research a lot of different things so you know how daily life works, how maybe weapons work, um, garments, things like that. The problem is you can get so deep into this research hole that you have stacks and stacks and stacks of research and you never get to writing because you're just constantly doing research. And the same can happen with world building. You are trying to figure out how this world works. This is a particular problem in fantasy. Uh, you're trying to figure out how this world works, how the, you know, maybe the cultures are, maybe languages, religions, all of that stuff. And again, you get stuck in this research hole. It's not really research, but you're, you're world building and you're trying to figure that stuff out and you never actually get to writing. Um, a lot of people too will actually get stuck in the world building cycle and will never actually write a plot or characters. They'll just world build and that's fine, but you're not really going to get a story out of it. So a couple of tips to help break you out of that cycle. Uh, I like to research as I go. So I do the bare minimum research I need to, to get a story started. And then I will start writing. And when it comes to a point where I need to know something, uh, I will look it up. Either I'll look it up as I go. If it's something as simple as what was the name of a vehicle they used back in the day, uh, I can just look it up right then and be like, all right, this is the name. But if it's something a little more complicated um, in my current uh, novel, they had to go to uh, Covent Garden, which um, they had held operas there and stuff. I didn't know a lot about it. I didn't know what sort of operas they, they had. So I had to research it um, a couple chapters ahead of time so that I knew how I could set this up so it wouldn't be a problem when I got to that point. Um, but I didn't have to sit there and research for you know hours and days. I, I looked it up on Google. I looked up a couple different sources and went, okay, this is this is how I can do this. So you just research as you go for the historical stuff so you don't get bogged down in it. And this can be more difficult if you have something that's super reliant on um, certain specific things. But another tip would be to read a lot of different fiction novels about that time period. Maybe even some nonfiction too, but read different fiction and see how other authors went about it. See how much they actually describe. Uh, one of the big things that you'll notice both with um, historical research and world building is that 95 to 99 percent of the research and or world building you do will never be seen by the reader. It is all just for you in your head so you keep things straight, but most of it you will not show to the reader. So going based on world building, some tips, try to think of the basics first, whatever basics you need to get started. What type of place is this? Is it a different planet? Is it a different um, place in general? What sort of time period is this place in? What type of people are there? Certain basic things that you will need to know before you write. Get those nailed down and then start writing and start figuring out other details as you go. Now, you may need to figure out something more complicated before you start. Like maybe you have um, this complicated religious system that is integral to the story. You may have to figure that out first, but only do as much world building as you need to to get started. As soon as you have the bare minimum to get started, get started. And then you can fill it in later. And some people may not like this as much, especially people who are rigid plotters. They may want to know exactly everything. So this can be a little more difficult. Um, but I find that this works for me and it works for a lot of other people to just build what you can to get started and then 
go. So a big tip I would like to give anybody who is doing any research or world building is to not uh, overshare your research or world building. I don't mean to your friends or your family. That's fine. They might get annoyed, but it's fine. You can tell them as much as you want. Don't overshare your research or world building to the reader. They will get bored. <laughs> um, this is a very common problem. You have done a whole lot of research. Like I said, you'll have stacks of research or a whole bunch of world building or both. And you really want to share all the stuff that you, that you made or you, or you researched with the reader. But the reader is probably not going to care about most of it. That's why you want to put in what is important to the story, what's important to know, maybe a few little details that um, flavor the world and give them a little bit of an idea of what you know, things look like. But you don't have to have paragraphs and paragraphs of how something works or what something looks like unless it's really important. And even then, you may want to try showing something in action versus just telling the reader about it. A really bad example that I found of this was, I believe it was in the book Candle in the Window by Christina Dodd. This is a historical romance novel. It was, the, I believe, the first one that she got published. And she's huge now. She has a ton of novels published. But this was, I believe, the first one. And this was set in the medieval, um, medieval England, I believe. And so I think it was like 1100, 1200. And... She described in excruciating detail, um, like sleeping arrangements, like how I think they had um, pallets instead of beds. I think a pallet was, it wasn't just like a pallet, but it was like just sort of a pile of stuff on the ground type of thing. And they didn't really have individual bedrooms. They all just kind of slept in a grand hall. Um, and, oh gosh, it was painful. I was bored. I just was like, please. I get on to the story and the romance. I don't care about all of this. Show a little bit. Tell, just say, hey, they were sleeping on a pallet. We'll figure it out. Don't Just don't tell me all the little details. So I hope this was a little bit helpful for figuring out uh, when to write your setting and how much research to do and how to avoid maybe some pitfalls where it comes to developing and writing your setting. Uh, I have done all of these. <laughs> I am guilty of a lot. Uh, I am sharing these because I, I've been writing since I was like nine. Um, I've been seriously writing for like maybe eight, nine years now, but I've been writing since I was nine and I have made pretty much all of these mistakes and they're horrible. <laughs> I would develop a world and I would just describe the world in the very beginning and it would be pages of what this world is, what these people are, what they're doing, and nobody cares. <laughs> and I would just sit there and write. Uh, I was so bad. But uh, it's fine if you do this. You know, it's good practice. And sometimes you need those big, long, expository paragraphs. But these are just general tips. You know, nothing is 100% with any of the tips I give. These are just some, some things I've noticed in my own writing and other people's writing. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I said that in every video and I, I mean it. I do hope it was helpful. Even if being helpful means that you got to waste like 10 minutes so you didn't have to write your own novel. <laughs> Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments or critiques, you can leave them down in the description below. Um, I'm going to also be starting to do uh, videos about how I personally write. Um, I got a request and it'll be fun to just talk about my writing because I like talking about myself. So yeah, so go ahead, like and subscribe if uh, you want to see more content. Uh, I will be doing more content. I've been doing so many of these novel writing videos and writing stuff. But that's not really what this channel is primarily supposed to be. It's just kind of what I've felt like filming. Um, I've been doing so much writing so I'm like, all right, here, share, share my writing with people. And my husband, he doesn't understand. <laughs> he's like, okay, he's supportive, but he does not understand at all. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.